studio. This is Emma. Welcome if you've not been to my studio before. Um, this is the place of uh, true happiness for me where I just come down and I play with all my fabrics and my stitching and sometimes I don't get down here as often as I would like to because other things delay me up in the house but the minute I'm down here it's like being in heaven. I've had people come on workshops here actually who've just come in and gone oh this is so lovely. It's a very tranquil place, it's my space, it's only got my stuff in apart from a little bit of my daughter's stuff in the corner that I've sort of corralled in the corner um, and so you know nothing moves unless I move it and it's just my stuff and I like that and okay uh, I probably I do do a clear out now and then but um, and it is probably quite full if you could see what I can see you'd probably be going oh my goodness she's got a lot of stuff but all of it gets used at some point and I do go through it regularly once a year I go through it anyway that's beside the point the most important thing is we're looking at my flower samples today I have completed both of them and I'm going to talk you through finishing off the second one like my last video was doing um, embellishing for the second sample where I use my embellishing machine to create um, a background using uh, lovely lacy fabrics and then I cut out my green leaves and embellish those down using my, my lovely machine and I did some stitching as well. Oops, mm, got attached to me. Um, so this week I'm going to show you how I did the flowers and then I'm going to do a little comparison of the two methods because the first piece I did just using stitching and the second piece I used my embellishing machine on. I'm not going to show you too closely because I want you to see it uh, at the end properly. Okay, so without further ado, I will show you what I got up to um, with the next phase. In fact, no, the first thing I'm going to show you, sorry, I did a bit of a backtrack on my continuity on this film. <laughs> I think because I stopped over Christmas, I kind of lost the plot on exactly where I got to. And I filmed a little bit of showing how I cleaned up the, the front of this. After, after you've done stitching and you move from place to place, uh, across your picture you end up with lots of threads everywhere and so the first thing I'm going to show you is is how I dealt with that and then we'll move on to the second sample so I do hope you've got a nice cup of tea and you're going to have a relaxing little watch okay so I better just clip some of these little threads off and then that'll make it look a lot better got a nice sharp pair of scissors here I'm just doing it very carefully. That's the only thing about moving in between little bits across the, uh, the piece that you're making, obviously, is you end up with all these little strands. But the satisfying thing is when you cut them all off, it's just really nice. You just kind of suddenly go, oh, I think it's a bit like cleaning a room. You can suddenly see what you've created clearly and uh, it's almost worth having this fiddle. I suppose it's like sewing your ends in on uh, when you knit something or crochet something and you suddenly get all your seams sewn up and all your ends tucked away. This is this is very satisfying to do. It's quite a peaceful little job, I don't mind doing it. It's such a lovely day and I'm just so happy to be back in my studio. And I'm so happy to be getting on with this little picture because this little sample, because it's been sitting here, bless it, all over Christmas, waiting for some attention from me. And it's almost like I'd kind of started it and then, because I went away from it, I couldn't quite remember what I had in my head at the time when I was starting it. Uh, but luckily it sort of came back and I think it... What happens is, when you come back to your process of the making and you just start playing again with the fabrics, because I, luckily I'd cut some bits out and I kind of knew what I wanted to do, um, but the process of doing it reminded me of what I wanted to do and actually the process of doing it has changed what I've done and it's informed what I've done and it means that next time if I was going to take this to a, be a bigger picture which I may well do I don't know it's just at the moment it's just playing with some fabrics and trying out some techniques 
and seeing where it's going to take me. I'm just really enjoying, I'm enjoying doing flowers. It's, flowers is not something I've done very much of in the past. There now, you can see, I think I'd probably put some more, I can see the gaps now actually where I want would like to put some more of the little stamens, just in terms of the balance of it. But you can see uh, all the different colours and how I put the leaves down and the background and the lace, I think it works quite well together. So that's quite a nice little sample and I've got the other one to do which is over here. Let's put that one out of the way for a moment, sorry. I don't know if you can see, <laughs> I've got my lovely wrist warmers on today because it's so jolly cold. So I've got this one, um, which is the one where I've embellished the background rather than stitching it down. So I'm going to work on this one next as well. I'm doing some different things for the stalks and I will finish that one off. And I just want to compare the two and see if there's any difference and in the making, because obviously not everybody has an embellisher. So I thought if I did both techniques, then we could see what was what. Okay, so I've got my flower heads on now. I've, um, I've done a little bit of embellishing and I'm just going to do another round of embellishing and get them to make sure they're firmly fixed. The thing with embellishing is you do as much or as little as you want to. If you do it slowly and build, it, build up your layers, um, now you can see you can hear that. Do you hear that banging noise? That means I've got quite a lot of thick fabric here now because I embellish the leaves on and then I've stitched them. It's created quite a stiff, thick fabric for the um, next layer to go on to. So it's not totally happy doing that. So I'm doing it very gently. Because I really don't want to break any needles. If you break needles, you have to take them out. You have to work out with your machine. You'll have a manual and what have you. It's something to consider actually when you buy a machine is how easy it is to change the needles because they're all different. Mine, you can take the entire head off if I need to and you get a set of tweezers. It's a bit of a fiddle. You have a little uh, Allen key thing and you have a set of tweezers. But touch wood, you don't break any needles if you take care. But it does happen. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to stitch this next and we'll see where it gets me to. Okay, so I've got these embellished down and I've got these stitched down and now I'm just going to have a final sort of flourish of stitching and I want to get some little stamens onto them. I feel as though they need a little bit of definition. It's a much, I think it's a much softer approach using the embellishing machine. It softens everything up and it gives you some raggy edges, which you, you know, you may or may not like. Um, I think it works really well when you're doing the whole piece embellished. Um, I, I think uh, it's, a, it's a good way of getting things blended together. So I'm just going to add these little stamens on. This is the fun bit. This is the scary bit, if you like, because you've got to make your final choices. Um, I think it's, a, it's, it's the hardest bit in a way. You've got to make your final choices about what colours you want things to be. So let's give it a go. I absolutely love it when I've got um, a surface like this to stitch into. It's just really lovely. I've done all the sort of preparation and now I've got somewhere to stitch into and I just really love it. The other thing with this part of the stitching is it's knowing when to stop, knowing when you've done enough. You know. The beauty of fabric is you could always add something on top of it. If you really don't like what you've done, you could even cut it up if you don't like what you've done. But nothing's ever wasted, even if you don't like it. 
you can look at it and say, well, why don't I like it? And what would I do differently next time? Okay, so I'm going to finish that off. I'm going to put some darker colours on here and I'm going to finish that off and show you it when it's all finished. Okay, so this was all my little fabrics that I've used, all the bits of lace and the organzas and the velvets and I'm really pleased with what I've made. So I'm just going to move those out of the way and I'm going to show you these. I'll show you them together to start with. And you can see that they're very, very similar, but there's differences in them. This one is the one that I just stitched. I stitched the background down very simply. I stitched the leaves on. There's no um, bond web or anything. I just simply stitched the leaves on in place. And then I added the flower heads and I stitched those in place. And then this one, I did it with my embellishing machine as you as you will know because you've watched me do it and they're very different I feel as though this one's really quite neat and precise and I do like it it's quite simple and effective but somehow I like this one better I don't know why I think it's softer it's got more interest going on with it it's less precise than the other one um, I embellished the background and the leaves and the flowers and it's a different, as my mum would say, it's a different kettle of fish basically. So it's horses for courses. If you want a softer approach, if you don't mind that your fabrics get a little bit mangled and a little bit uh, rough around the edges, then an embellisher is a really useful thing to use. If you're happy to have it neater and more clean looking, then stick with just using your sewing machine. It's really nice because I think this shows that you don't have to have an embellishing machine to produce beautiful things, okay? The embellishing machine for me is a really useful tool and it makes a different thing, different product if you like. What I'm liking is these are just my little samples that I made. But actually when I come to put a little frame on them, um, I've actually made a nice little picture. I've got another a bigger frame here to go on top of that. Although that doesn't show up so well because of the light coming in from that direction but you can see that actually out of my little samples which is all they were they were just experiments there's potential there to actually frame them up but my intention was really to make something that I wanted to experiment particularly with the embellisher and see what it does with, with sort of making the fabrics um, mingle as though they're being painted um, and it's a new one for me because it's a different shape of flower and I've really enjoyed doing them. So I hope that's given you some inspiration and maybe you'll get your fabrics out. It's really hilarious because today there is snow outside the window. We've had about three or four inches of snow overnight. It's really, really incredibly wintry out there. But in here, I've been doing springtime. So I like both of these, I have to say. I've really enjoyed making both of them, but I'd just be really interested in what you think. Um, I know everybody doesn't have an embellisher, so you can't all have a go at doing this one, unless obviously you can borrow or pinch one from a friend. You know, ask around if you want to have a go, ask around. Many people have them stashed in their cupboards and they don't really realize what you can do with them. So please do leave me a comment below if you like sample number one or if you prefer sample number two. And do say why, if you'd be so kind, because I'm just really interested to see what other people think. You know, I sit here in my little studio uh, <laughs> with all my own thoughts and all my own views on things, and I just would be really interested to know if anybody has any preferences or thoughts on how I've put them together. So, it's been lovely having you here in my studio again. I'm looking forward to next week already. I don't quite know what I'm going to be doing, as per usual, but something will inspire me. I've had a suggestion from somebody which I might follow up or who knows um, I just hope you'll have a lovely week and a peaceful week and a creative week and I will see you again soon in my studio thank you so much for watching thank you for being here thank you for subscribing um, I am oh I was gonna say the other thing is I'm going to be working on is a new workshop soon but I will let you know about that an online workshop I'm going to be working on that over the next few weeks as well but I'll let you know about that in due course so thanks again and I'll just say bye for now.